Hello everyone, welcome to another day in Magic Arena. I'm Brian, and you're watching Brian Learns to Play. So, in the last video, I've introduced a modified version of the Mutate theme deck. Uh, I've played it with the list for a couple more days and made some minor changes to it. So let's take a look at the new list. Okay, so the first thing is that uh, I've removed the, the stern dismissal, the one mana enchantment that says uh, return a uh, creature or enchantment your opponent controls to uh, back to their hand. So I found that this card sits in my uh, hand too too many times, and it just does nothing. Uh, it it either becomes a uh, uh, it doesn't answer the uh, problems that I actually am trying to address with this card, like uh, like Banishing Light, uh, I, I can bounce it, but then my opponent usually just replay it, and then I have, uh, I, I'll just have to spend another glint on it, so it's a bit of a card disadvantage, um, and my deck is, uh, although it is not a, not a weak deck per se, but it doesn't win very quickly enough to justify me to put uh, this kind of bounce spells into it. Uh, also, the clause where it limits your choice to only your opponent's uh, creatures and enchantment is problematic. Sometimes I just wish it uh, were an unsummon where it can also return my own creature but doesn't return uh, any uh, uh, enchantment. Because uh, sometimes if I can unsummon my own creatures, then I can save it from a uh, destroy spell or a, a board wiping spells. So it is very important. But uh, for now, I've removed the stun dismissal. Uh, I haven't put the unsummons in yet because there are some other cards I, I would like to try out on in the deck. So uh, maybe in the future, it may... Uh, end up back in the deck, but for now, I've removed the, the stern dismissal. Okay, so another thing I've made a, uh, a change is that on the land count. Uh, so I've played 24 lands uh, previously, but I found that it is just so easily mana screwed and uh, just adding another land into, into the deck is a lot more makes it a lot more smooth when you're trying to draw lands. Of course, uh, there are times where you uh, mana flood and draw too many lands and uh, too, too few actions, but uh, the fact that we have Winged Words to refill your hand, uh, you have the Frog to keep cycling through your deck, throw away the useless lands for some more action, and uh, also the Dreamtail Huron, and uh, one copy of Sea Dash Octopus to keep your cards coming to your hand. I, I think uh, that is enough uh, card draws that uh, we should not uh, worry too much about getting mana screwed. Um, also, I've reduced the, the uh, this one mana flying 1-1 one, one Sapphire Gold from 3 copies to 2. Uh, too many times it is just a very uh, bad top deck because if you draw it like uh, in your opening hand it feels good you just slam it on the table start smashing your opponent uh, later if they can't deal with it you can start mutating on it it is also a body that is guaranteed so you can uh, uh, be sure that you can like at turn 3 or turn 4 you can have something to mutate on it because if your board is completely clean and they manage to maybe uh, just remove your uh, frog, then it it will be problematic. You you can't have uh you, you don't have any creatures to mutate on, and you don't want to spend like five mana to just uh, put these uh, mutation creatures onto the battlefield or four mana or things like that. You and when it comes into play, if you don't mutate them, it doesn't trigger us, and it just it's like slamming a 4 mana 3-3, free free. it does not work in many games. So, uh, I'll still keep it, uh, keep 
this one here for the moment. Uh, maybe in the future, if we have uh, uh, some better uh, creatures that we can maybe from opening packs or uh, stuff like that, then we'll put it in. But for now, I'm keeping this deck to be completely free of cards that uh, is not uh, included in the uh, introductory theme deck. So, also, I've added a Nightmare Shepherd. Um, this is actually a card that is from another theme deck. I, I'm not sure it's uh, some of the dual, dual color decks. Uh, this one, it says 4 mana, 4-4 four, four flying creature, which is a demon, it's not a human, so we can always mutate uh, creatures onto it. Uh, so 4 mana for a 4-4 four, four flying, uh, respectable, not very uh, exciting, but it's still a uh, acceptable uh, card. Also, it has an ability that uh, if another creature, a non-token creature you control dies, like uh, there is a board wipe spell or uh, maybe some murdering effect to destroy your creatures, uh, it says you may exile it. If you do create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's 1-1 one, one, and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. So what this does is that it, if your creature dies, you may choose to exile it. And if you do that, you can make a token uh, that's a copy of that creature. So what happens is that uh, maybe we have like this Sapphire Girl and then we have uh, mutated something like uh, the Hemophage or uh, the Shaw Shark onto it and then when it gets targeted by like a um, murdering effect uh, such as this uh, maybe Swift Dan where it destroys the creature uh, you can with this effect you can exile the, those creatures so it doesn't hit your graveyard it just gets completely removed out of the game and then you'll create a token that is a 1-1 one, one, and it's the exact copy of those three creatures mutate stack uh, so it is a way to like uh, an added layer of protection for the mutation creatures uh, I I'm not sure if it is uh, uh, it, it does work because uh, if it slams on a table, chances are your opponent will just point uh, uh, removal at this uh, Nightmare Shepherd instead of your mutation creature. But then, that is also an other card they will have to deal with. And it is also a very respectable body as well. So I think it is uh, really worth a try. Uh, okay, also. I've added the Shark Typhoon into the deck. Uh, so this is really a major oversight from last time because uh, I I'll explain. So Shark Typhoon, what does it do? It's a 6 mana enchantment that says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create a, a shark creature token uh, with flying where its power and toughness is the spell's converted mana cost. So, uh, let's say you put it on the table and then you cast something like uh, a Heartless Act. So Heartless Act is a 2 mana uh, instant. Uh, when you cast this and then you have that enchantment on the table, you get a 2-2 two -two shark, 2-2 uh, two -two flying shark token. Uh, sounds pretty good, but 6 mana is a lot. In this deck, you basically, like 99% of the time, you do not spend 6 mana to just slam this enchantment on the table. Instead, we are going to use the second ability, which is Cycling. So it is Cycling, a PX and a 1 colorless and a 1 blue. So when you cycle Shark Typhoon, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying. So for those you do not uh, understand what Cycling is, Cycling, you can uh, do it at instant speed, you pay the mana cost, and then you just uh, discard the card to draw a card. So what this actually does is that, uh, let's say if you uh, pay X as 1, so it is 2 colorless and a blue, and then you get a 1-1 one, one blue shark token because uh, X is 1, and then you discard this card to draw a card. So let's compare this to 
the Tomb Raider. It is also a free mana because we, we are like two colorless and a blue. So it is also flying, it's also 1-1, one, one, and it enters the third field, draw a card. Uh, so basically it is comparable to each other already, and you can do it at instant speed. So it is a more it's obviously a more powerful uh, card than just putting uh, Tomb Raider here. Also, you can uh, sometimes uh, put more mana into it if you have more lands, like say three or four uh, manas into the X course, you get a 4 4 shark, very respectable body size already. And in addition, you can have it played as an instant. So sometimes your opponent attacks you, you can just uh, tap all your mana, uh, flash in, as in you just uh, cast it instantly, you flash in a shark. And then just block their creature, and their creature just dies on the board if your opponent is not aware of uh, any shark typhoon coming in their way. Also, you have to note that uh, if you cast Tomb Raider, uh, it is a creature spell, uh, your opponents may counter it. But if you uh, cycle the shark typhoon, it is not a spell. So, uh, in standard, I understand that there is not a lot of. Uh, spells that is being played that counters ability so it's basically an uncounterable spell already so there is a lot of upside to using shark typhoon i i mean if we are doing this cloud seer tomb raider thing i think uh uh you you can just if you have them you can uh include uh, four copies of shark typhoon in in place of these two uh and it is completely fine. So just remember that don't don't just slap it on the table. It does nothing. Uh, most of the decks not and not just in this deck, but most of the deck you you uh, with a shark typhoon in it, you don't want to just slap it on uh, on the table because uh, you're most likely like getting like a two two or a or a three three, and then you just pour a lot of mana into it. It's pointless. Uh, it's not mana efficient. So it doesn't win you games. Instead, you just flash in, get the card back, uh, and and then you have a, a large body on the battlefield. So uh, that's it for the deck tag. A little more shorter than uh, before. I hope to uh, have a longer play sessions, uh, so that you can see more uh, of this deck in action. So let's jump into the games. Since uh, we are at the very beginning of uh, of the ranking uh, period, so we might see some uh, tier list stack. Let's see if this works. Okay, so two land. Uh, we have a frog. We have a girl. We don't get to cast the girl on the first turn, but other than that. Things look amazing. We can also maybe try out the Nightmare Shepherd. So I will keep. Okay. Opponent seems to be some kind of uh, mono black or Ragdox uh, sacrifice. A scry, something show shark, definitely on the top. We are looking to have the shark ready. On turn three or something. Okay. The decision is whether we uh, play this land and then have a frog ready. That way, if we draw the third uh, untapped land, we can just uh, instantly have this uh, show shot ready to mutate or. You can just play the tap land and then play this 1-1. One, one. I think the frog is always the best. 
next turn, if we really just wait on a uh, untapped land, uh, we if we don't draw it, then maybe we can put out a gal. Well, <laughs> let's draw out our opponent's hardest act. Our opponent is missing land drop. Uh, very good, because we are going to continue to develop our mana base while they stuck on two lands. Not ideal for them. Uh, it is highly likely that they are just playing mono black. Yes, the third land. Which is also a swamp. Crystalline Giant. So this creature uh, it continues to gain uh gain tokens where it give them flying first strike or some. Powerful creature, uh <laughs> I'm not gonna block. You see, because this uh Creature has uh, has counters on it. How does that doesn't kill it? So uh all right. Do we just try to draw into another untapped source? Hmm. Or maybe we just put this one on the table. I think having more bodies on the battlefield is a uh, is a better choice, and this goal is not going to be any good anyway. So we draw the two cards. Uh, we will attack. We will have to be very careful because uh, this crystalline giant uh may at random gain uh a rich counter, which enables it to start block flying. Like an opponent discards two cards, builds a card, and lose one life, gain one life. Powerful card. I will discard this uh <laughs> this girl. And uh Warden of Evil Isle. I don't really need these two. So and yeah, my opponent also took away <laughs> my next land, but I have one in hand, so should not be a problem. No blocks. I'll take four. Going to 13, a little bit of uh, pressure on this side of the battlefield. Okay. So, this creature actually sometimes gains uh, hexproof as well. So, I will really want to try to like bounce it before it actually. Hmm. So let's assume that our opponent uh, doesn't do anything when we, uh, uh, during their turn and just attack away, our bounce this creature and then maybe they replay it. Uh, that way they don't have the chance to gain a counter on it so that our Halizak may do the job. I'll play a untitled land here and then we we'll attack for two. And we'll end turn. Opponent decides to play a shrine here, two mana. At the beginning of your pre main phase, your opponent loses its life and you gain its life where X is the number of shrines you control. Okay. I wait for them to enter. Uh, combat before I start doing things like that. Oh, my opponent is tapped out. Maybe they have a land or not? I don't mind. But I will start uh, rotating now. I'll have to get rid of this one before it actually gains hexproof and I can't target it anymore. Oh no! He milled my one copy of Shark Typhoon. Uh, not cool. But uh, 
It seems that my opponent is not playing a very dedicated Leo deck, so I'm not too afraid of this Enforcer because all my creatures have flying and they just can't block it very effectively. Uh, we can maybe mutate at instant speed. If we mutate now, they, of course our attacks will, will give us a card. In the process, do we want the card so badly, or do we just put a shepherd on the table? I don't think so. I think uh, we'll just attack, and then have my shepherd on the board, and end the turn. This way, I can. Okay, I can respond uh, to some of my opponents' play by mutating on the shark or. Okay, they killed the shark. Okay, we get to see this in action. So the shepherd, uh, when when my uh, when my creature is killed, I should be able to allow them to resolve. So this uh, ability triggers. I can choose to exile them. So I have a one one. So you can see here uh, that. I oh yeah that I just mutated it and it has the whole stack on it I believe is it oh, it's awkward <laughs> uh, do we just eat the scorpion this looks very awkward Why not just block this? <sighs> I'll take one. This looks very odd. This attack. Okay. Um, so my opponent didn't have a chance to cast the giant. Uh, in that case, I will just, I'll just pass. Ah, I have also the glint. I think we are at a pretty good shape here. Uh, I just mutate onto this right now. And then bounce this scorpion. I don't want him to just uh, recast the fifth skill and force us uh, again because it's like uh, I'll just give them a chance to uh, mill my deck again, which is not I, what I'm trying to do. I also get to draw a card, another Hollis Act, good one as well. If they recast the Crystalline Giant, I can, uh, before it gains counters, I can just kill it. My opponent is up to 5 lands, and instead of casting the Giant, they cast Revenge of Ravens, a 4 mana enchantment that uh, says if a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, uh, the player loses one life and you gain one life. So the one one attacking my opponent is not very good. It just caused me to lose one life, and then uh, the life gain uh, actually just negates the damage. So it is not as good, but we find some way to deal with this. Or maybe my shepherd will just uh, do the job. <laughs> I hope. Alright, so the fifth guild enforcer attacks. At this point, I really just want to. Hmm. Maybe not. I'll, I'll just take it. I can just deal four on my turn, so. Oh my god, another glint as well. My opponent is not going to. Get out of this easily. So I, I know that this attack uh, will only cause me to lose one life and my opponent will not receive any damage but I want to get the card uh, uh, with the octopus. Also uh, there is this one this 
uh, display here is that uh, I put the octopus on the bottom instead of on the top. So if it is on the top, it should be a 2-2 two -two instead of a 1-1. One -one. But for now, eh. Alright, my opponent goes to 11, but then goes back to 6. Okay, another Tomb Raider. I get to put it in. To have another Trump Blocker, should I need it? Okay. Alright, uh, my opponent keeps draining from these uh, enchantments. It's really a problem. However, my opponent is uh, having some difficulties trying to uh, deal with our board. Of course, uh, the 1-1s one are not hoisting any, <laughs> any threat to them. And other Revenge of Ravens. Not good, not good. Maybe at some point we will just have to destroy their uh, fifth skill enforcer. Uh, I just killed this one. Uh, when the scorpion dies, uh, it will deal two damage to me, and then my opponent will uh, gain two life. I uh, also charm block because for now, um, every bit of uh damage we can prevent is important. Also, when you see that uh, my creature dies. Uh, not by a spell, but by uh, combat damage, I can also exile it. The funny thing is, if I exile this, I get to draw a card. Good one, Winged Words. Let's see if we can draw into something good. I think my opponent is thinking maybe they sit back with the ravens and then I just can't attack with any of my 1-1s. One if I attack with the shepherd, I still lose 2 life before I can actually deal any damage to them. Uh, 50 calls, 50 calls. I may have to uh, draw the, the mutate creature where I can uh, start a draining life to close out the game. I hope to be seeing this in my next uh, couple of cards. Oh, a bunch of more lands. Not good. But I will gain some uh, gain some life back. Go back to seven. But if I attack with my shepherd, this only deals them actually two damage, and I take two. Oh god, <laughs> very bad. If my opponent attack, oh no, they just keeps getting back life. Oh, oh, we just lose. <laughs> uh, does this do anything? No. Well, then good game. Uh, my opponent gets to uh, drink six life from me, and then I just die <laughs> from the damage. Very good that they have this top deck, or maybe they just have this uh, uh, all the way. I don't know. Doesn't seem like they have it, because if they have it, they should have played it uh, like last turn, so it may have been a top deck. This is a very good uh, mono black deck. Uh, I don't think they make good use of the fifth, fifth skill enforcer, uh, but uh, the thing is that they just. Uh, keep killing stuff, and then uh, with these uh, draining effects, keeps them into the game. Like you can see here, I'm at, mi at minus two, then they have 12 lives left. So, uh, pretty impressive. I don't think there is, a, aside from the octopus, a, any major displays here, I hope. <laughs> Alright, let's go to another game. Alright, let's see. 
You go first. Uh, two land. Borrower. Octopus. Uh, seems like a good hand. Uh, this one can be used. Uh, this one can be used uh, at some point. This one can be used as well. So I'll keep. Also, a lead on this uh, evolving wilds to fetch an island. So that I can have a uh, different different color mana on the second turn. My opponent leads on white, and that's the third land that we need. My opponent seems to be um, playing a life gain deck or a mono white aggro deck. Could be very challenging. Do I want to illuminate it right now? I think we do. We illuminate it. And then on the third turn, we present our own threat in the form of Cloud Seer, where it also gets us a card. Shark Typhoon, nice. So Shark Typhoon is a very um, versatile card. You can pump uh, any number of mana into it to cycle it and get a big shark, or you can put no mana into it and just a blue and a colorless and then just cycle it away with no shark and then if you really uh, are pinch on land uh, or you're digging for answers sometimes that can actually be a correct play okay we didn't draw the the land this is all Okay, I will have to uh, try to try to draw into a land. Ah, but it's a tad land. Okay, still better than low land, I think. Okay. Uh, that is a pity. That is a pity. Hmm. But I still want to just uh get the full uh. Let's see. Sitting back doing nothing and uh, just uh, bouncing the pacifism at our opponent's end step doesn't sound like a, an acceptable play. So I'll try to draw into an untethered land and we do. So now we can, on end step, we can just bounce the uh, pacifism, allowing my creature to attack next turn. My opponent is gaining back the two life they lost. Ah, it's a it's not a mono white deck. It's a blue white. Seems like a uh, uh, very strange to have deck souls and then a uh, uh, blue white deck, because you you sometimes uh you, you just want more devotions on white, and then the two white can also make it very awkward if you want to just cast it on turn two as well. That is very strange. I suspect that my opponent is uh, holding onto a counter, but if they are holding onto a counter and counter this uh, by bounce spells, it is okay. My next turn will usually be like uh, just rotate stuff. My opponent, of course, can uh, recast it later, but. For the moment, we can attack to draw a card. See if we can draw into the glint where it gives our uh, creature hex proof. We do not, but we do have this uh, chittering harvester forcing my opponent to sack a creature. 
not very useful for the moment. Um, I think I, I'll I'll lead my opponent into uh, uh, playing the pacifism on them again, and then maybe just flash in some of our stuff, maybe a shark token, or maybe if it is a uh, if there is a creature I absolutely want to bounce, then short shark it is. If not, if nothing else, I can still just play this present borrower here as a free one uh, creature on the on the air. So I have many lines of play in the upcoming turn. Okay, my opponent also plays the pacifism. They should be expecting some more, uh, some worse cards uh, coming into play because. I just bounced the pacifism, so they may just be hoping we do not have it. Uh, our hand is loaded with action, actually. I just want to put more bodies onto the battlefield. My opponent. Does not have a response. Move to my turn. Draw a land here. So our attack does not have any. Uh, I can't uh, attack with the octopus to draw a card. Hmm. But. Uh, let's see. This is free mana. I still wanted to hold up the uh, instant shore shark in case something happens. Alright. My opponent is down to 13, I'm at 21. So this puts a lot of pressure on them to have to deal with the board. And I have also a lot of cards in my hand as well. Uh, on my opponent's uh, turn, I may either be shore sharking. Oh, Bane Slayer, that's a big threat. So, uh, five mana, five five, uh, flying first red life link, many abilities, uh, protection from demons and dragons, powerful. But on the end step, we will just uh, bounce it back to my opponent's hand. With this shore shark uh, flashing in. Let's see if this works. If they uh, respond with any stuff, I think we can just bounce the wall and then Next turn, I will just force them to anti cognition. Uh, I'll pay two, I, su I suppose. Uh, I'm not sure what that does, but uh, okay. I bounce this. So my opponent will not have anything to respond to it. Uh, I think this is a major oversight. I have two manas open, so this doesn't stop me from doing anything. And now, I can use this to mutate onto my Bresen Borrower and force my opponent to sack the Angel. I, I think this is a misplay from my opponent's part because uh, they can actually save it. Oh, my opponent concede. So you can see here, uh, I think my opponent should just hold on to the anti condition because um, if uh, what what they are going to see is that uh, I played the short shark right, so and I have the open two mana available to uh, pay for the the anti condition tax where uh, it 
says page two. Of course, if my uh, uh, graveyard is at eight cards, then it is a complete counter spell where it just stops the spells completely. But I get to have the uh, options to play two, and then I have to uh, I have the manners to pay them. So it basically does nothing, and they lose a card as well. If they let me uh, bounce, do the bounce, right? Then either I will bounce their wall and then leave their angels on the battlefield. And then when we uh, uh, cast this uh, children harvester, they can then enter condition this harvester uh, instead of responding to the shore shark. But of course, if we. Um, uh, Let's see, if we uh, bounce their angels as well, they can get the uh, uh, get uh, another chance to just counter another threat to stop them from going to a very low life uh, total as well. So uh, overall, I, I don't think that is a right play. Uh, my opponent overreacted to the short shark. But you can see here is that uh, Playing the deck at instant speed uh, is a very powerful thing. You you force your opponent to respond uh, completely with their mana. So once they tap out, you just cast something that they can't respond to, and they'll lose a big board or just completely, at this time, uh, like lose the game. Okay, let's go to another game and see if we can continue this winning record. So far, we are not uh, seeing any tier deck as well. So that is a good thing. Oh, four lands. Uh, the hand is slow. But I can on the third turn shark typhoon for a one one token, and then the fourth turn we can mutate. I'll give it a try because uh we are uh, I go first. Yeah, if I I, I go seven uh, uh I uh I go for the draw where I go second. I I don't think uh, this is a capable hand, like it's just like a, a lot of turns doing nothing but if i go first yes then it should be okay all right i'll lead with an island my opponent on some uh Blue white action. Okay. Watch of the sphere. Two mana for two to flying. Creature spells with flying you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever another creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Uh, very good. Uh, I think we are facing a flying deck here. Oh, not good. I think we will need a an answer to this uh to this watcher of the sphere because uh if it gets too large i cannot really chump block it and i don't have any response as well so it is the tomb raider or the warden of evil isles I, I, Uh, 
I'll just delete it with the Tomb Raider. Click deep, I can't. And we get the answer in the form of Palace Act. You can just uh, kill it next turn. Waiting on my opponent to decide whether to play flying creatures or to just attack. I cannot respond to any of the the plays, so they are just free to go for it. But uh, play, they've played a tad land. They have two mana available. Green robber. Okay, sure. I will not block. Okay, notice that this pass is like very quickly, so I think uh, my opponent should not be having any one mana instance to re respond to my play. Okay. Hmm. I think we are. Uh, we want the double black to be available as soon as possible, so we'll just uh, play this. And I don't want them to chump block with the wind robber because it's my only creature. Maybe this sends a very bad signal about it because uh, my opponent would understand that this is a very important creature, and then they will try to get rid of it uh, in some way or form. Best recap. Uh, opponent goes for a planeswalker. Uh, okay. See what they do. Play plus one plus one counter on one of the target creature. Again, indestructible. Sure. Sure, I guess. Maybe. I'll prevent them from getting this, uh, I'll just destroy it. I mean, we can, of course, uh, kill the Watcher of the Spears, but if they start uh, putting a lot of, like, uh, uh, counters onto the creatures, uh, I, I will lose very quickly. So instead, I will decide... to mutate this creature so that uh, uh, it will have 4 power to attack the Bessery Cat but we'll just use the frog first this reduce uh, the cost by 1 allowing me to uh, mutate it for 3 mana uh, the, this card is a uh, Swarden I will bounce the creature, yes, and then I will attack down the best cat. So, what a lot of people out. I, I I really don't like a, I really don't like it, but it allows for some uh, explosive play. I expect this card to be uh, the next line to be removed from the deck uh, further down the road because it really does not uh, help too much with our uh, strategy and it end up, end up uh, sticking into uh, our hand too many times too many times okay our opponent is uh, going very all right what do we do Do we need another land? I think we do. Alright, uh, I'll only attack with the Shore Shark because if they try to uh, double block it, I can uh, eliminate it in one of them in response so that it is kind of a blowout for them. They lose the board. If they don't, then it's okay. We get in for 4 damage and uh, on the next uh, uh, turn, if they 
try to attack in, I will just likely uh, flash in uh, the bats to try to block some of them. Of course, uh, if they put a land into play, then it has landfall, becomes a 3-3. Free -free. This one, if they play another flying creature as well, it becomes a 3-3 free -free as well. So maybe it's not uh, the best uh, idea to do that, but I still think that uh, having open mana to respond to whatever they are going to play is very important. Also, we have Eliminate. If uh, one of these creatures becomes too crazy <laughs> on their own, like uh, landfall after landfall is 4-4, like four, then four, I, I can just simply eliminate them. Okay. Alright. Everyone is playing Blank Sire Angel these days. I don't know why. Alright. Uh, two, three, three acquired. Hmm. We can just uh, cycle in a four four to block it. Maybe. And then next turn we just uh, mutate onto something to kill the angel. Seems good. And then I will take down this watcher, try to. Oh, I have the Hollow Sect as well. Okay, let's see. If I play two and then that leaves four. No. Cannot do that. I was thinking maybe we can just play the frog and then uh, mutate to have uh, open mana available, but uh, we don't have that choice. So instead, um, I'll just Hollis Act the angel because it's just too much problem in itself. So that I can uh, get in with these two. Worst case, we uh, flash in a bat to uh, chump block and then, uh, or maybe illuminate something in response. I would also like to hold the uh, frog here. Maybe it's a misplay. I think if we play that the frog, then. We have two frogs in the in the battlefield and then just and my opponent scoop it up. Uh, what I'm trying to say is uh maybe I'll just uh hold on maybe it's a misplay where I should just uh, throw the frog out so the dirge bed will uh, cost only two to be flashed in. Uh, but uh the problem with the frog is that um it starts to go through your deck really quickly. And if your hand uh, has no card in it, uh, it's basically like uh, milling yourself. Uh, not good, uh, considering our deck has a lot of uh, one-offs. Uh, if you mill them away, then you, you forever lose them. Of course, uh, it is uh, not really what you should consider because uh, they always say that a milled card is a card you would never draw. It's kind of like a card that is... Uh, on the bottom of your deck, so maybe that's a wrong, wrong, uh, wrong call on my part. I think I should just uh, slam the frog down as well, so that I maybe at some point will uh, flash in the bat and then get uh, two looting triggers where I can just draw the card and and uh, try to loot through my deck for answers or something like that. But uh, I, I'm surprised that people are uh, slamming Blink's uh, angels. Uh, in here and once people try to do that uh our deck uh which plays uh, at instant speed is particularly good they will try to bounce uh bounce them back to their hand they spend their whole turns to play this angel and then getting nothing out of it one once it's bounced it or uh, it gets out white killed it and have uh, uh not even a single chance to 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 gain the life they uh, 
uh, very much needed, things like that. So I think this uh, this deck is very powerful. And uh, so far, uh, from what I've seen, uh, the Nightmare Shepherd is also very good. Okay. Okay, maybe we will uh, wrap up here. Uh, let's take a look at the... Oh, and we get another pack as well. Let's open the pack first. Okay, anything that is... Uh... Cinderclasm. Um, so two mana, uh, deal one damage to each creature. Uh, if you pay the kicker cost where you cast it for one colorless and two red, uh, it deals two damage to each creature instead. Uh, not good, uh, because I remember there is a card called Pyroclasm, two mana, uh, two damage to all creatures, so... Ah. Uh, human warrior. Okay, more uh, uh, warrior tribal cards. Aura, Skyclave, uh, Hero Vent. Uh, four mana for a free free life link. When uh, this creature or another cleric you control dies, return target cleric card with lesser converted mana cost from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, I believe this is the card where uh, they give you F as a as a gift. Uh, if you buy their ninety packs uh, set in in the store, mm, good if you are playing cleric. Uh, I think the the black white uh, theme deck uh, that they gave you which is a lifelink uh, theme theme deck you can easily transform them by taking away some of the cards that is not a uh, cleric and then just put in uh, put in some cleric to make it a cleric tribal deck uh, yeah, so that card could go into that one, but it will be uh, a more difficult uh, process because uh, the deck is not completely just about uh, Clorax. In fact, they don't have a lot of Clorax in the deck, like just the Veto. Uh, and that's it? Oh, I'm surprised. I, I thought this, uh, uh, yeah, and this uh, a noted uh, Chor Chorister. I thought they have a lot more cleric in this deck than, yeah, than this. But uh, hmm, okay, maybe next, uh, maybe later. Okay. So, uh, coming back to the deck list, uh, again, Sephago is, uh, I I would consider it for the moment. It is a necessary evil. If we get a, a bit more like a permission spells, like a counter target spell, uh, like a negate where they counter non creature spells, or essence scatter counter uh, creature spells, or some other form of interactions in our deck, uh, I, I think this girl can go away, uh, uh, be taken away from the deck. Uh, very bad top deck, very bad top deck. Uh, but for now, it stays. Uh, sometimes I'll just uh, put it on the field. Uh, my opponent will have to answer it, or I'll start to uh, mutate creatures onto it. So it's not just a flying 1-1. One, one. So for them, it becomes a much more threatening presence. By, uh, because they allows me to uh, mutate these creatures onto them and have the uh, cost reduction as well. Uh, We've seen the Nightmare Shepherd uh, in action one time, and uh, that seems pretty good. I, I suppose my opponent does not uh, understand how the interaction is, or else I, I think they will just uh, go for the Shepherd instead of uh, uh, instead of the instead of the mutated creature. Of course, uh, we end up uh, losing the match, but I think it mostly comes down to my uh, misplay on uh, the octopus going bottom instead of top so sometimes you need to uh, be aware like uh, whether you mutate your creature on top of something or on the bottom of something to
to like have the maximum power and toughness or sometimes if you really wanted to dodge some sort of uh, removal spell like uh, uh, extinction event uh, you try to have uh, different mana cost of creatures like odd creatures uh, like a mana cost 3 or mana cost 5 and then there is another creature where it is like a even creature where it is a mana cost 4 mana cost 2 you you have to be aware uh, it's not always just mutate it and then just put it on top uh, other than that uh, we don't have any uh, mana screws uh, in this in this play session I, I think it's pretty good the additional land does uh, do its job and uh, we don't usually get mana flooded uh, easily anything else uh glint we haven't seen it in action but uh i i can tell you uh when when i'm uh, playing off off stream uh, this card saved the day uh, a lot of times uh so even uh, uh the the last couple of games uh, we've seen that if we hold on to glint we can play more aggressively like we just hold two manners and then we can be and uh, we can ensure that uh, if our opponent tries to interact with our creature uh, it is okay because uh, maybe if you mutate a pouncing shore shark onto a creature and then that creature gets uh, killed on in response and you don't get the trigger you it might be a very important uh, trigger that you really want to resolve so having a glint to protect that is very important uh, so Heartless Act, uh, it makes for some very awkward uh, <laughs> situation where our opponent have quite a number of, uh, uh, let's, just, let's just say, uh, a, a, quite a number of creatures uh, in standard, uh, playable now, uh, can put counters onto itself. Uh, like we saw Crystalline Giants, and uh, there are uh, a couple of cards that put uh, counters onto it, uh, uh, onto other creatures as well. So uh, Harris Act can get awkward sometimes, but still, because it is a two mana that can just destroy a creature with no, without a lot of drawbacks, so it is a premium uh, removal spell. That's also the reason where Illuminate is in the deck. Sometimes if they just, uh, like the Crystalline Giant, if they don't have the Hexproof, then Harris Act cannot take care of it. But the eliminate can so it is not completely uh, uh, dead to their crystalline giants as well all right so i think that is all for this deck i'll continue to improve them uh, but next time if we uh, go back to this deck i think i will uh, get into some of the cards that i've uh, uh, i've pulled up from some of the packs i've opened uh, I have another uh, pack opening session where you can see all of the packs I've opened. I think it is a bit long, it's like uh, more more than an hour, but I go through a couple of the cards as well. If you are interested, you can go watch it. Uh, we, we've got quite a few cards that are very interesting and I'm looking forward to putting them into the deck, like uh, this Shell Shield, which is uh, essentially a better uh, form of Glint. Like this shell shield is a uh, one mana that gives your uh, creature plus O plus three until end of turn. If you kick the spell, it gains hex proof. So it gives you the choice of uh, one mana to make your creature's toughness higher, or uh, if you pour more mana into it, like two mana, then it basically does the whole glint thing. Uh, obviously a straight upgrade from glint. Also, we have, uh, uh, yes, uh, put some anti-cognition as well, uh, which allows us to uh, respond to our opponent. And I believe I also have a negate here somewhere. Yes, a negate. Counter target on creature spell. Very important. Uh, counter their pacifism, their uh, banishing lies. Uh, uh, whatever uh, they're up to their organs uh, you, you really don't want them to resolve an organ against you 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 just die on the spot also into the royal uh, another very good uh, bounce spells like two mana bouncing on land permanent uh, 
So I, I'm pretty uh, ah, and I've also put uh, another frog as well. So four copies of frog might be okay, might not be okay because we don't really have a lot of uh, mutation creatures uh, in the deck. But I'll give it a try, see if uh, three copies or four copies is the correct play. You only have three copies if you only have the um, uh, basic deck that they gave you. So yeah, basically there is a lot of things I would like to try. Uh, see. Yeah, but for the moment, this is the deck where I, for the moment, I, I, I will have to be, have to say that this is the form where I would have it played. If you don't open any packs, if you don't craft any cards, you get no more additional cards than I, I think this uh, uh, this version is uh, quite good. You can see that the deck runs very smoothly. Of course, it wins some games, it loses some games. Uh, but it is fun that to play. If you like this style where you can uh, instantly do something on your opponent's turn and then you just uh, keep having creatures that are evasive, flying uh, on, the, on the battlefield and then just attacking your opponent, Give this deck a try. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you, uh, you enjoyed this play session. Uh, for for the next time, I may at some point uh, get to improving this. But for the next video, I am planning to take a look at some of uh, these uh, uh, basic decks as well to try and improve them. Uh, to to make it uh, uh play more smoothly maybe win some games as well as you can see um i'm yeah in go tier so uh any uh unchanged version of uh, basic decks i think can get you to uh plat platinum I, I believe is it plat platinum yes platinum uh but with a little bit of tuning, the deck can be more consistent, I, I, I believe, and uh, uh, can play more smoothly where you uh, have much fewer games where you just draw a bunch of cards that you really don't need, and then there are uh, a couple of games that you feel completely overpowered, like uh, you just crush your opponent. Uh, it's, uh, to, with some changes to the deck, I think it will run more smoothly, uh, it will carry out the strategy uh, a little bit more better. I will try to stick to uh, not using any cards other than uh, the cards they gave you from these uh, uh, basic theme decks uh, so that uh, you can always guarantee to have the list available to you. And uh, also uh, uh, further into the into more couple of series, I, I think uh, I, I will uh, try to put more of the cards I put it, but then uh, maybe you may not have it. I, I'll give you some of the insights where uh, how I determine what I put in, what I put out as well. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoy this uh, Mutate Station deck, and I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, until next time, I'll see you again. Goodbye.